Hello, in this lesson, I am going to cover the difference between a centralized system, a decentralized system, and a distributed system. So what is the difference? First of all, a lot of people use the word centralized, oopsie daisy, distributed, and they don't always use it correctly. So in the case of blockchain, for example, so blockchain is a transaction system, essentially a fancy database, an amazing database. People call it distribute, I mean, decentralized, they call it distributed. And it's not one of them, it's actually both of them. It is a decentralized distributed system you can have a system that is decentralized and distributed what it isn't is a centralized system there are elements of centralization in blockchain and various other decentralized distributed networks a lot of the time they're not there by design they are there as an addition to essentially accommodate the current state of let's say the economy or technology as something i will cover in a separate video in this one just going to cover what a centralized decentralized and distributed system is so first of all let's go through centralized so a centralized system essentially has a single authority this could be an individual it could be a government, it could be a company. So essentially an organization that controls the transaction, the processing of everything. So in the case of blockchain, or I should say, let's say the internet, for example, if it was centralized, there would be one authority that controls everything all these branches you can think of as nodes let's say users for example they could be servers so so in this case they are centralized so your ip your internet provider is a great example of this they are essentially the centralized system your internet provider and if they were to choose to take their servers offline or take you offline for whatever reason maybe you've broken their terms and conditions then you will lose access you could obviously go to another ip but again they will be centralized so that's essentially what a centralized system is so let's just talk about the advantages and disadvantages the obvious disadvantage is if a centralized system were to go offline so maybe it's a company and it were to go financially broke they couldn't manage to pay for their servers and as a result they stopped there have been companies in the past you just if you just look over the past year or two and if you look over the past 10 20 years there have been companies that have not been able to sustain themselves and as a result they've either shut down networks systems or they've essentially shut themselves down and the users have been left in the dark because they haven't been able to communicate with the central system, which allows them to communicate with the other users. The advantage is because there is a central organization, they can set one set of rules. Again, you can argue that's good or bad, but let's just say the rules are fair, that's good. Because if there's a bunch of different people and they're all setting their own rules, there's not much consistency so there are advantages to centralization it, uh, um, you, you shouldn't look at it as okay decentralized distributed is the key for everything but there is definitely merit to all of the different systems so that's centralized let's have a look at a a 
decentralized system. So a decentralized system is essentially like this. So let's just draw some nodes off of this. So we have these nodes. So again, let's just think of them as computers. And let's draw a few more, a few more, a few more. And they are connected, so these main nodes are connected together. So this is a decentralized system. So the benefit of this is if one node were to go down, the overall system could still function. This super node, I'm just calling it a super node, could essentially connect let me undo that that didn't look very good could connect to this other network and theoretically these could connect to this main system so that's a decentralized system so advantages of that not one single authority has control over it which is fantastic and it allows some would argue and i would agree a truer form of democracy in the system so that's decentralized so what about distributed a distributed network ends up looking similar to a lattice style structure I won't draw any more. You'll be able to get the picture from what I'm doing here. And they are connected like so. So this is essentially a distributed system. So in a distributed network, not one single place is, sorry, drew in the wrong place. Not one single place is processing the data. This is also similar to P2P, which is peer to peer, which is very similar to what stuff like Kazar and LineWire used to work on, and many other platforms still do. And what this allows is if one node were to go down. So imagine this is a peer-to-peer -peer network where you're sharing legitimate files, of course. Then all of the other users either have the files or they are part of the file. And if this user over here wants a particular file, they can get chunks maybe from this user, they could get chunks from this user, they could get chunks from this user, they could even get chunks from this user. And that's essentially a distributed network. So those are the main differences between a centralized network, a decentralized network, and a distributed network. And networks can be more than one of them. So in the case of blockchain, they are both decentralized and distributed and what that essentially means is no single authority controls it and no single place processes the in 
of mation and this is a truer form of a democratic network because if you have essentially one single authority controlling it, whether it's data, whether it's people, then that is not a democratic system. And well, yeah, it's not a democratic system. Whereas with a distributed, decentralized is a democratic system, which allows information to be processed very quickly, very well, because it's not dependent on one single node which is good you can use multiple nodes with varying processing powers and if one node were to go down you can just use a another node also for example imagine if these nodes if this node was the main one here if this were to go down then like i said you could get data from other nodes but in a centralized system, obviously not only can you not get it, but let's have a look in a decentralized system. With a decentralized system, the data could essentially be further away. I know we're talking about fractions of a second, but if you're sending data, a lot of it, then that can actually make a huge difference. So that can be benefits of a distributed system as well and a decentralized system. So I hope that has given you some insight into a centralized system, a decentralized system and a distributed system. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and thanks for watching.